Good morning, y'all. My name is Eric. This is the Cummins Camper. We're broken down in Baja on Christmas. So I figured we should do a little morning chat on how we ended up here. Um, about four days ago, we lost all forward momentum because a big old part inside of our, our truck failed. The axle shaft broke and we proceeded to try and milk it in front wheel drive to get further along the road and towards San Jose. And what ultimately happened is that broken axle shaft ate into the wheel bearing and some other items on the, uh, the axle itself. The axle housing was cracked. And now we're in a position where we're fully stuck until we can get this whole rear diff fixed. Um, on top of that, we found out that the metal shavings from the broken axle shaft and the axle housing ended up drifting their way into the oil and the fluids and the whole rear differential itself. And the gears are now shot. So we're getting an entire rear end rebuild before we're able to move on and, and forward. And even after that, we're still gonna have to go to another shop because we found that our front end has a whole bunch of issues as a byproduct of beating the crap out of it in order for us to get here. So it's a, uh, it's a tale of a lot of failures and we're hoping that we're hoping that we're able to get it all proper and fixed up before we head back north. But in the meantime, we're in paradise, so we're not unhappy. Part of our morning routine each day during Broken Down in Baja, we take this quarter mile walk up the road to a restaurant that's under construction. The owner was super nice. He has given us not only the Wi-Fi password, but the other day he took sympathy on us and made me lunch. And we hung out and just talked about the history of how he ended up here 20 years ago and fell in love with this La Fortuna section of Baja. And he just kept coming back year after year after year. And now he and somebody he's known locally for the last 20 years put together a, uh, an outdoor restaurant, which this town definitely needs. So yeah, let's go check out our, our morning hangout spot. So this place has been awesome for us. This is where we come every morning and check in on our phones and do stuff that pertains to our Airbnb and work and such. Also it gives us a chance to fiddle around on social media and stuff like that. But it couldn't come with a better view. Little, little ocean action back there for sure. And uh, what's cool is at the end when you're done with your work, you take a walk down to the beach and take the beach route on the way back to the camper. So when we get back to the camper, I'm gonna show you guys where we're at in terms of our breakdown and also show you a bunch of items that we have with us that have helped tremendously in our time of being broken down here in Baja. Things from solar, to our composting toilet, what tools we have with us, and a whole bunch of other items. And uh, yeah, show you soon. All right, so let's get underneath the truck and we'll show you the hot mess that we're in here and what's missing. The morning after we crash landed in this beautiful spot, we met our mechanic friend Lupe, who lives locally in La Fortuna. Lupe and I tried to remove the broken axle shaft only to find that the axle housing was broken as well. It was in that moment, we knew we were Sadly, we knew that the axle had to come out. So we jacked up the truck, set it on wood cribbing, disconnected the drive shaft, removed the brakes from the axle, disconnected the U-bolts holding the axle to the leaf springs of the truck, 
remove the brakes, remove some sensors, and I learned a whole lot more about my truck. So we figure while we have an abundance of time on our hands while broken down here, we should go over a handful of the different items that we brought with us that have made a huge difference in surviving here, broken down in Baja. So our first must have item for surviving Baja when you're broken down is definitely your six gallon jerry can. In general, coming to Baja, you should bring one of these because it's the easiest way for you to get water from the purificada to the camper, van, whatever you have. Um, but also, if you're broken down and you got friendly neighbors like we've had, you can just pass it off to them when they're going into town, they fill it back up, and you got some water for a few days. You gotta stand there, just hold that water on your head. Whether you're broken down on the East Cape of Baja or just getting into RVing, Solar panels are probably something you've heard of before and thought a lot about. We'd strongly encourage you to get solar for your rig, whether it's a truck camper, a van, or a motorhome. Our camper has got three 160 watt panels giving us 480 watts worth of total potential of power, feeding two 100 amp hour battle -born batteries. And these panels do a great job of keeping up with our demand load while we've been broken down here in Baja. It's been charging our laptop, and also keeping our fridge running during the day with the amount of output that these panels make. Here we are with one of the key members of our team here in the Cummins camper, the lav, the john, the shutter, the composting toilet from Nature's Head. This thing has been a game changer for us. The fact that we don't have to dump out a black tank on the regular, we're able to go three weeks before having to change out the solids. You only have to dump out the liquid portion every two days, uh, but on top of that, we got rid of our black tank entirely and switched to a freshwater tank in there that ties into our existing freshwater tank. So now we've gone from 42 gallons of freshwater to 67 gallons of freshwater, allowing us to stay off grid that much longer. The next items on our list for must have things to bring to Baja would be tools. We brought a lot of tools with us. So many tools that my wife Marissa thought it was excessive, but in reality, we didn't have everything we needed for this endeavor that we found ourselves in here. If it weren't for the help of our mechanic friend Lupe and locals stopping by who Lupe knows and being willing to donate the 30 millimeter socket that I didn't have and uh, other stuff like that, we wouldn't be able to be where we're at now and we wouldn't have made it as far without having to get this thing towed somewhere further and pay more money. So having tools with you is super important. I'm gonna show you what tools we brought with us to Baja including some recovery items too. So we've got four max tracks, a recovery strap, bottle jack, two jack stands, hatchet, some small clamps, uh, propane and little torch. This is our air compressor. It'll fill up our 35s pretty nicely. We also have filled up our inflatable paddle boards with the same pump. This is all hand tools here, pliers, mixed bag of different stuff, wrenches, screwdrivers, miscellaneous, and then adjustables. So here's our power tool section. We have a circular saw, sawzall, drill, air compressor, jigsaw, half inch impact gun, and our grinder cutoff wheel combo action over there. This bag is pretty much all sockets, half inch, mix of half inch and three ace, all three ace, quarter quarter. Realistically, you don't need all of those power tools. You don't need a circular saw, you don't need a jigsaw, but if you have a full size rig, sometimes it's nice to have that stuff when you're on the road all the time and you need to do a project in Home Depot's parking lot. So can't emphasize enough having not only hand tools, but certainly some basic power tools. So the next thing you're gonna to need to work on if you're gonna be broken down here in Baja is your wave. Because if your wave sucks, people are not gonna like you. And you don't need any other reason for them to mess with your stuff while you're broken down here, mess with you. Doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna happen, but if you dial in that wave and show them you're polite and you're appreciative of the fact that you're here and you're broken down and it's a beautiful spot, they'll take care of you.
Having done over 100 or more different waves to people as they've gone by, it's very clear who's better at, at giving out the waves here in Baja. It's without question the locals. The gringos, they suck real bad. Um, it's, it's nowhere near in terms of the enthusiasm or the consistency that you get out of the locals in terms of the waves. At this point, a lot of locals are giving us like the beep beep and the whistle and stuff as they go by. And uh, the touristas just ignore you <laughs> as though you're not even here. So the next item on the list that you need when you're surviving being broken down in Baja is most definitely good neighbors. We've had a multitude of great neighbors throughout this experience. Matt and Kayla are here with their RV. And for example, right now we are charging our camper off of their camper. I know I gloated about our solar panels earlier, but unfortunately we had a really gray morning and I've been fiddling around on the laptop a whole bunch. And so it was easier to plug in off of Matt's 2000 watts worth of solar up there than breaking out my own generator or patiently waiting for enough sun to recharge our own batteries without needing the support of others. But yeah, great neighbors are a key metric here. Other example of friendly neighbors would be the Instagram friends that we have, especially no ETA, um, but also other people on there that chimed in when our truck broke down, but also we've had great experiences with the neighbors that are here up and down this road on the East Cape. They've offered to bring us food, beer, water. Um, they've checked in on us to make sure that things are going smoothly with getting parts back. And it's been super awesome to have the hospitality of the locals here, both the actual locals and then the expat imported locals. So if you're gonna be broken down here in Baja, we definitely recommend that you take up any opportunity you can to replenish supplies like food and water, groceries, alcohol, you name it. Because it doesn't always come across your plate often that you can hitch a ride with somebody into town. Or even if you have a rental car, it's still 45 minutes at least to get to town from where we're at. So the supplies available are pretty limited. We took the opportunity today to make sure we stocked up while in San Jose. And we should be good for quite a while longer here broken down. So each day that we've been here for the most part, We've had this group of surfers that show up from San Jose. They're all staying at a hostel. The hostel is only $12 a night. And to come out here and surf isn't much more than that. They've been super nice. And uh, they've been hanging out with us a bunch, keeping us entertained. They're out here if they're surf or not. They'll just chill on the boards and hang out and do a beach day. We got our first rainstorm that we've been in here in Baja. I'm definitely taking my first RV or hobo, uh, hobo shower. Woo! Oh, this feels so good. Not to over divulge, but it's been, it's been a long time. I'll say it's been at least 10 days since a proper shower, other than just swimming in the ocean. The salt, the salt is literally melting off of me right now. This, this might be better. This is not better than a real shower, but circumstantially given, this is a great, great shower. It is so So otherwise, we're kind of in a wait and hold pattern here, hoping to get the parts back from being repaired. In the meantime, we've gone to San Jose del Cabo a couple times, uh, check that city out, which is a really great city. Tons of little shops and restaurants to walk around. It's definitely got its tourist section and then a whole lot of other sections that are much more authentic. Once we get our truck parts back from the repair shop, we're gonna continue to film the whole resurrection of this truck and getting 
the axle stuff back under there, reconnecting all the parts, all the mechanical stuff, but we'll also try and capture the trials and tribulations along the way of what will likely go wrong as we go to put things back together. Last but not least, we wanna thank today's video sponsor, ourselves. If you're looking for an Airbnb in Northern New Jersey on the largest lake in the Garden State, check out the listing below for our New Jersey-based Airbnb, or if you're looking to go skiing or snowboarding in Vermont, check out the other link, which is to our condo in Killington, Vermont, where they're hosting all sorts of great events all winter long, and I'm sure they're getting dumped on with tons of snow and cold temperatures while we're here in beautiful, warm Mexico. Big thanks to anyone and everyone who stuck around to watch the whole video here of us in Baja, and we can't wait to share more stuff with you guys as these adventures unfold. Be sure to uh, hit that notification bell, like, subscribe, share, bam.